Hey everyone, today we're talking ChatGPT within Go High Level. If you don't know, my name is Drew. I'm a Go High Level expert. I'm going to show you exactly how to get ChatGPT set up inside of Go High Level. Before we jump in, two quick things. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to drop a comment below. We'll make sure to answer any questions that you do have. And secondly, we do offer a free 30 day trial. There's a link in the description to be able to get started today. Jumping into the Go High Level platform here, I'm actually gonna start inside of my agency view. The reason for this is Workflow AI is a premium action that you do have to toggle on. So if you go into your agency view, you go to settings and then company, you go to the Workflow AI, make sure that it is toggled on. Again, because this is a premium action, there is a cost associated with that you as the agency can decide whether or not you wanna take on that cost or you wanna pass it down to the client. You do have options to be able to do either one of those things, whatever is best for you and your business. Jumping back into the sub account here, we are gonna build out this ChatGPT in the workflow. So I already have a workflow created. I'll start with the trigger and work my way down through the steps. The top function here with the trigger the customer reply trigger is gonna be the most likely scenario here since you wanna have a message that is incoming in order to send to ChatGPT. ChatGPT will then create a message and be able to send that back to the lead. Now, the other thing that you can do here is with the filter, you can actually change the reply channel here. You can edit it so that it only replies to contacts with certain tags or contacts from a certain channel. So in this scenario, I have chosen the texting channel. So basically anybody who comes into the system here sends me a text message. ChatGPT is then going to send a prompt to ChatGPT. I'm gonna get a response back and be able to send that back to that person all without having to do anything manually. Now I have this assigned to user step in as the first step. The reason for that is for some additional personalization and context. Personalization is something that I really like to use when I'm talking to all of my leads just because it helps to build that rapport. Relationship building as you're talking to leads, getting them through the sales process is super important to be able to get them across the finish line. So that is why I have that step in place there. It's not something that is necessary. I just use it so that I can use you know, my name or my salesperson's name inside of the message when I'm talking back to the client. Uh, just provides some additional context really and provides for a better response. The next action that I have here is the ChatGBT function. So before I get into the prompt, I'm gonna show you how to find it. You'll click the plus sign there. You'll type in ChatGBT. There it is in the action then you will come up. Now this will be blank when it first opens up, but that is totally okay. The prompt, there are some examples in here to be able to generate a response, generate some content, check the intent, whether it's positive or negative, translate it depending on the different languages that you use. So I have typed out my own prompt just to provide ChatGPT some additional context as to what I do, how I want it to act, and you know what the, the ultimate goal of this conversation is. So I start my prompt by saying, this is who I am, this is my company name. Again, just providing more additional context for them. Customers are real estate investors who are looking to generate more inbound leads. Again, this is just more context in here. It's not a necessity to add this into the prompt, but I think that it's important because I wanna make sure in the language that I'm using when I'm talking to leads, that ChatGPT has as much context as possible to provide the best response possible. The next step here with this sentence is to generate a friendly and uh, this should say and professional response. Again, you can make this whatever you want. If you want it to you know, be funny, crack some jokes, you can do something like that. Uh, or you can make it be super serious and very direct to the point. I am also using the contact first name in here as some additional personalization so that when it does generate a response, it will likely use the contact's name within that message, which I think is important as well. Just again, building that relationship there as you're working the customer through the process. I also tell it to keep it less than 160 characters. 
this is a another note for billing because as you know high level does bill on SMS now granted it is very very low cost but any of the additional segments on top of the initial one that go out are additional costs that either you as the agency have to be in charge of or you have to pass on to your clients and it's important to know exactly how much this is costing as you're you know, send, sending and automating those responses here. Last sentence within this is uh, the goal of the conversation. So my goal of this conversation to learn more about what they're looking for and book an appointment with them and ultimately you know, add a calendar URL. Again, this is not something that you have to add, but I think it's important to let ChatGPT know this is my ultimate goal and this is kind of where we should be pushing people down the line. Last but not least, you have to make sure that you do enter the message body. This is what the customer actually replied to you. So without this, you just have a prompt and ChatGPT doesn't know exactly what to respond to. So something that's super important, the formatting other than just adding the custom field in here uh, isn't super important. So I just had a couple of spaces between it and uh, that is it. Last but not least is the temperature here. The temperature is a value between zero and one. Zero meaning the responses are gonna be very straightforward and very direct. If you go up to one, that means that the responses will be very diverse and creative. So this can be a good thing if you're afraid of ChatGPT sending the same response to leads over and over and over. I don't think this is necessarily an issue, but I do know that there are people who want it to sound exactly like a person. And so what you would do is you would turn this temperature up here. It doesn't necessarily have to be one, but you probably want to make it, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, something like that. We will click out of this. Last but not least is what you are sending back to the customer. Again, if this is not a SMS reply, then it will be a Facebook message, Instagram DM, chat widget reply, something like that. So you wanna make sure that you select, the last step here is the sending back to sending, Jesus. The last step here is sending the message back to the contact. So whether you are sending a text message back or an Instagram DM or a Facebook message, this step may be a little bit different, but the message is ultimately what is the same here. So this is a custom value that you will pull from the menu here. Once you enable the workflow AI, you will go to ChatGPT. Now it is super important here to be able to mention the number at the very beginning, because if you build out a workflow that has more than one ChatGPT response, you will need to know exactly what number prompt and response you are sending and receiving so that it has to match the message response in here. So as you can see, the second step here is number two. And so this custom value says chat dot two dot response. So again, if you're working it through asking multiple questions, there may be number two, number three, number four, number five, you'll want to make sure that whatever the prompt number is, you'll want to make sure that that also matches the number that is in the message here. You'll go into custom values, you'll go to ChatGPT, you'll go to whatever the correct number is. If there was more than one of those steps in this workflow, you would see multiple of these and then you'll click response and it'll paste there. You'll make sure to save the action and then you're all set. So that is everything for the ChatGPT workflow. Again, you can build this out as much as you would like on many different channels, which is a huge advantage inside of Go High Level to be able to buy back your time. You can add if else functions, you can add wait functions to this so that you can take advantage of as much of the automation as possible. If you have any additional questions about the ChatGPT workflow or how to use it inside of Go High Level, feel free to drop a comment below. Again, we do have that free 30 day trial, that link in the description to get started today. Thank you guys for watching so much. If you liked what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe for future videos, and we'll talk to you soon.